who we are and how to get in touch with us. Um, we are at Save the Pine Barrens, and this is the name of our presentation here. Our agenda, again, to repeat is uh, the videos, myself, and then Maggie, and then we'll end with a QA. and a as, we're, as you probably know, and if you don't, these poles that we're concerned about are treated with copper chromated arsenic, which is a toxic pesticide that leaches from wood, it's water soluble, and it's entering our groundwater and our soil. I'll discuss how ratepayer and taxpayer subsidies for solar projects are subsidizing these projects and how this is happening in our local communities. So the subsidies are from ratepayers and taxpayers. They are funneled through the Department of Energy Resources, or DLER, which is a state agency underneath our Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Katie Theomartis, who reports directly to Governor Baker. In recent years, they have put out a solar subsidy program. They're calling them the Smart Solar Regulations. And two of the projects that we are concerned about, the two buying gate projects and many others in Carver and throughout Southeastern Mass, are called what's what they are what they call dual use or agrovoltaics. The, the regulations of the DOER require the continuation of existing farming and recording of crop fields for solar panel sites where crops are being grown under the panels. So the land under the panels must be used for some sort of agriculture. The DOER regulations have different levels of subsidies, and in order to maximize your subsidies, it's often um, done that the companies will use some of these creative um, things like putting solar panels on top of cranberry bogs. The cranberry industry itself admits that this is experimental and no one really knows whether the crops will grow underneath the solar panels. The process is such that the Department of Energy Resources pre-approves the projects, issues a pre-qualification letter from the landowner and the, sub the solar company, and they have approved the projects that we're concerned about in Carver today. The dual use projects have to have an approved farm plan. However, according to our research, many projects, including one in Carver on Gate Street, have been built, are operating, but have no farm plan. The DOER administers the subsidy program using taxpayer money. The Massachusetts Clean Energy Center, which is based at UMass, works with solar developers to do research to justify growing crops under solar panels. For example, the UMass Cranberry Extension Program has a $1 million grant to study use on cranberry bogs to see if the crops will grow under the panels. In the meantime, we're building these projects in Carver we have uh, just the, these three projects, $55 million in arsenic poles, being installed for a 30-year period, even though there's no evidence that the crops will grow underneath them. And we are asking, is this really the way to help member farmers in Southeast, Southeastern Mass, or should the subsidies go directly to the farmers themselves instead of into these research programs and out-of-state corporations? The UMass study of um, growing crops on prime farmland in Western Mass and Northfield shows that a 40 to 60 percent lower crop yield. So in that particular case in Western Mass, a 120 acre solar project on prime farmland, the company Blue Wave has decided to graze goats instead of raising crops and food. And this is a far lower economic return for farmers than growing a high-priced product such as strawberries. And this is one reason why, for example, the Northampton, Massachusetts Agricultural Commission is opposed to dual use on prime agricultural land. And we have many resources on our table, including that statement, recently issued by the Northampton Agricultural Commission. In Carver, taxpayers and ratepayers are subsidizing the research that's going on to try to justify 
grown cranberries underneath the Pine Gate Renewable Projects in, in our backyard that we just saw. Um, again, there's 100 acres, and it's a big experiment. The AD Make Peace Project on Swan Bolt is another type of incentive program under the state's SMART regulations. The one mile of solar canopy in the cranberry bog and in the groundwater is called a solar canopy. The money from ratepayers and taxpayers is channeled to the solar developers for our electric rates. The SMART is called a tariff-based program. Again, the DOER approves the solar project and tells the utilities, such as Eversource, that it has to buy this so-called renewable energy in order to sell electricity in Massachusetts, guaranteeing the solar companies a market for the products. Despite all of this state involvement in approving and vetting these projects, the state has refused to take any action with regard to the citizens' concerns here in Carver about these arsenic poles. In October, we specifically asked the Department of Energy Resources to provide some assistance to the town and to the community to address this toxic pole situation, and they explicitly said that it was the town's problem. These solar projects in Carver and elsewhere, large ground mounted solar projects, are evading environmental review under our Massachusetts Environmental Policy Act. I can go into the legal reasons for that, but I won't bore you with that. We've been bringing this to their attention. Basically, the state is shoveling money out the door to out-of-state corporations to take advantage of these taxpayer and ratepayer subsidies and refusing to take any responsibility for the side effects, whether it's deforestation, loss of farmland, or in this case, arsenic poles that are polluting our ground water. The Carver Conservation Commission and Planning Board approved these projects in about 2019. Neither AD Makepeace nor Pine Gate Renewables disclosed the use of the copper permeated arsenic in their permit applications to these two local boards based on records that we have obtained and posted on our website. When local residents saw the polls going up on Fremont Street or Rochester Grove this summer and saw them clearly labeled copper chromated arsenic, they raised alarms. It wasn't until mid-September that the Carver Conservation Commission responded. To our knowledge, the Carver Planning Board has not taken any action whatsoever and again, the state has done nothing to respond to anyone's concerns, whether it's the Department of Environmental Protection, who is responsible for protection of our water supply, and certainly not the Department of Energy Resources. As folks may know, a stop work order was issued by the Conservation Commission in early 2021 for two of the three projects in place, but AD Makepeace and the Swanfold Project, that's a $2 million project, is not under the stop or across border, and no one has given us an explanation for that. In our view, these projects exemplify Governor Baker's reckless solar policy that has caused so far 4,000 acres or more to be forest, a forest to be clear cut, and for our prime agricultural land to be used for solar projects. 150,000 more acres are planned to be clear cut or farm land planned to be used under the state's climate plan. Along with Mass Audubon and many other organizations who have signed on to the letter that's also over there, these, this is not the way to address the climate crisis. Specifically here in Carver, we demand an objective state study for, by qualified independent experts on the concentrations of CCA that's leaching and its long-term migration in the groundwater and soil. We're demanding that the projects file new applications for permit modifications with the Carver Conservation Commission and the Planning Board and that public hearings be conducted according to those permit applications. There's no way to fix this. The polls cannot be treated or encapsulated or otherwise mitigated. The poles must be removed and the land must be restored.
for it. And now I 